Finally, my friend, a new version for Affinity App has been released. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the new features on Affinity Designer 2.0. If you don't know me, I'm John Silva and I've been teaching Affinity Designer and using a lot in my work since 2018 for illustrations, graphic designs and so on. And let's get started because I want to show you in a very direct point, very simplified way as possible so you can understand each point of the new features. First, I want to start here on the new file, right? Here, you're gonna see the new panel for the new projects document setup. And here we have the categories being displayed in this, in this area. You have the orientation and also the settings here below. Also, we have here the recent button, this panel here, which is really cool, very nice. Basically, you can now display uh, in grid or in list. Now, let's talk about the new user interface. Basically, the new interface here on Affinity has changed, all right? Now you have new icons. You have new tools, tools as well, where you can display here on view and customize tools, all right? You have here the style picker tool where you can just drag, okay? You have a new layer spanner, which is very nice. I really like it. On the layer spanner, this one, now you have the group type. If you click here, you can see the show object type. In the previous version, you, you don't ha have that, all right? If you click here, you don't have. Now you have the show object type. And when you enable this option, all right, when you enable this option, basically you can see the icons here that is going to show you if this is a curve, if this is a raster a layer, if this is a shape. Also, you have the mesh warp group here where we're gonna cover very soon. But just to let you know that uh, the layer panel now is working better because before uh, many people struggle about dragging. Let's say I want to select this layer here, all right, selecting but sometimes people um, struggle to drag. Now, it's so far easier, for example, if you click here and drag. So just hold the mouse over the layer and release. So it's going to be very easy to click and drag right now, okay? And finally, my friend, it's time to show you the Mesh tool. This is a tool that many people has been asking Affinity on their forums because this really is a game changer for people that work with Vector, all right? Because you can change very easily the shapes without taking a huge time, you know, moving the nodes one by one. And now let's talk about the Mesh tool. The Mesh tool, basically, you can apply in a group. We have here the vector. If I select the warp group, you will see here these options being displayed. See here view the Mesh tool. Once you enable this option, you see that Affinity will enable this grid system. So you can change here and basically change all the proportions as well. I can make this just like that. I can click twice uh, to create more nodes. I can or change the directions as well. And keep in mind that when you do this, you can mute here, right, the, the mesh, because once you activate the, the warp tool, you have here the toolbar context. Also, let's say, uh, if you want to change this shape here, which is here, you need to go on the convert curves. So after select, by clicking on here in this icon, you can convert this to curves, and then Affinity will convert that warp to pure vector, all right? So you don't have any more the warp because we have just converted this to curves. And let's see more examples about this awesome feature. So let's start here by creating some, some lines just like that. I'll create a bunch of them just like this. Now I will select them all here, selected. Okay, I will go here in warp group, and then I will click in quad. This quad now enable us to change uh, the curve like that. Let's suppose that you want to do this. Then I'll click twice and then I can create more distortion. I can have this kind of results, which is very nice. Let's test now other one, which is the false perspective. This one here is very nice for mockups. Let's say that you want to create a mobile phone. A quick example about if you want to create a mobile phone. And then I will drag this inside and then look at this. Oh my gosh, this is nice. So basically what Affinity is doing is that this warp group is indestructible, all right? So you can bring the element inside, then it's going to apply on there. So if, if I change here, everything being included on there is going to change. So you can create nice mockups 
with this technique. Let's see another example about this tool. I will create here a text. Now I will go here below. I can go to arc vertical. I can change the value here as well. You can bend then by going here and bend horizontal. And also you can go to perspective to change the text. Before it was a very nightmare. You cannot do this in vector before, but now you can. Remember that if you go here in these options, we have others ones, which is a bit more complex. And remember that if you click here on convert curves, this option is going to make all the curves, all the text in curves. So they have just become in shapes just like this. Okay. And now my friend, finally, let's talk about the shape builder. Shape builder is a tool that many people has been requesting to affinity a long time ago because Adobe Illustrator has this tool. It's a tool that many people consider as a must that affinity needs need to have. Now, finally, we have this tool. Let me show you nice examples about how you can use this tool. First of all, you're gonna find this tool here on shape builder in this button. Let's do a very quick and nice example about how you can use it. I'll do this shape, all right? Do this shape. Now I'll create more ellipses. Then I will duplicate. So basically the shape builder is when you select the shape that you want to subtract or add and it happens automatically, all right? Keep in mind to select it then all, go here on shape builder. You have these uh, options here on top, all right? So basically if I just drag by clicking, it's going just to select. If I hold control, it's going to unselect. If you click, it's going to select. Hold control is going to unselect. So let's say that you are selecting them all like this. You can press delete just like this, or you can press this button here on top to subtract. This one here is going to subtract. If you leave this enable, this option here enable, basically you can just drag and uh, affinity will just erase. Uh, instead, if you hit here, the plus is going to add. This is what's happening right now. I can add, I can add here. This option here, let me back here. Create a new shape from select area. Can you see that we have uh, the shapes? If I click in this area, which is selected, Affinity will create a shape based on that area. So having this in mind, look how nice it is. You can create many logo designs or you know illustrations by changing. Let's say, ah, you want to create something like this oh, here. Now you can have different types of results, which is really nice. Now let's talk about the knife and scissor tool. Okay, how that works? This knife tool, uh, basically you slice a shape and once you slice, you can separate the shape. So imagine that this is a fruit ninja. Let's say that you use this uh, knife tool and then you can slice, okay, the shape, which is really nice and fast. Also, there is a hidden feature, which is the, um, the scissor, which is this one. You need to click, okay, and over the mouse on the line. So you can see there is a scissor. So again, knife. Over the mouse on the line, click, and basically Affinity will cut that area. It's going to cut. Okay, if you click here, it's going to do this. You you also can do this to separate some lines. Let's say you have this line. If you go here, knife, click, and then you can separate. But it's in the same curve, right? They are in the same curve. But if you do this with the knife, if you do this with the knife. The knife will separate them in different layers. This is the difference when you use the scissor and the knife. And now we have the measure tool. This tool you can use in order to get the distance about two points. For example, also you can get an error. If you go here, click to measure tool, uh, hold and drag, and then you can get the distance. In the middle, Affinity will display the distance, right? So you can hold here and release. But apparently what I didn't like is that if you release and then you click again, it's going to fade you know uh the option so i hope that they will have an option to keep the distance applied over here because you know by clicking and losing which is something that is not nice i think that would be better to have and save options and let me know here what you think about this new version did you like uh, what you are expecting what you like most just uh, let me know here on the comment here below, all right? Now, let's talk about the X-ray mode. This mode here is really nice. It's very mind blow for me. I will tell you why. Let's say that we have this project here. What you can do, and if you are already familiar with Affinity, you have the wireframe mode over here, 
okay if you click here you have the wireframe but before the version that we had it was only the outline it was this and now we have the option to enable the wireframe by x-ray which is really nice and cool because you can see between the shape and this is become even easier for you to recognize the areas right oh, here i can move this so for me it this is very nice in order to work even better with the uh, shape builder all right so you can see in between the shapes because let's suppose that everything here is in dark let's say that so this option helps you to see all right in an x-ray like you are seeing the bones also we have the option that it's called the hairline when you enable this option basically affinity will ignore the width stroke size okay basically it's going to make everything in a hairline so all the curves open curves in line with stroke no matter with the width is going to make everything in hairline mode which is very nice as well and now my friend finally affinity has released a new feature to open the ddbg files this is a kind of file that many people on the forum has been asking since 2015 basically and this is a file that you work with autocad if you want to have more precision if you want to work with electrical devices and machines when you want to have more architectural view of a project this is the way to go and now affinity you can open this file you can work with that so basically i will open here i'll click twice on my dwg file here all right then uh, you can have these options i will leave this as standard let me just uh, remove any items i will leave it like this uh now you can see that how the the project has been uh, opened right now okay it is all in vector as you can see which is something very nice and powerful for people that was really you know wanting this feature so that's it and now let me show you about the color picker that's gonna save you a lot of your time when you are working with styles with different type of objects so let's say that you have here these styles i want to paste this red style in this one zero what you need to do it is to select the color picker click here hold select the style picker tool this one and then you'll see that there is an empty why because you need to select what you want to grab the the style i'll grab from here uh, now it's loaded and then click 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 it's being applied nice now let's say that you want to copy from this one i'll copy okay uh, i need to unload okay unload click uh, now it's loaded and then click click and click boom my friend now look at this you can for example let me unload i'll grab this one from the text make sure that for example i want just to paste the layer effect okay which is has the drop shadow i just want to leave the layer effects click here now shadows has been pasted from this one and now so let me show you a very nice trick let's say that you have this shape all right which has this layer effect basically if you want to bring this layer effects to this text go here click and drag and place on here basically affinity will copy okay that effect to the layer that you have just drag it now it's time to tell you about the layer effect what we got here in neo so if i select any kind of object let's make this start here as example i will go in the layer effects go here then you will see this panel in this panel we have now the options to add duplicate effect what i mean about this you can add more outlines if you want so you can add an outline like this change the color let's say you want to make something like this i can add more outlines and make this bigger and also can you see here that we have these options move effect down so you can move in between also you can add inner shadow if you want also you can duplicate this effect if you want and move in between or change the color right so all these layers panels that uh, got the plus icon you can duplicate and have multiple of them and also we have the remove effect if you click here you can remove the effect just like that now let's talk about the scale with object this is an option that many people struggle when they are trying to resize a kind of project or object here i will bring this example so 
if I resize this eagle, I'm getting this result that is not nice. And of course, you can go here on the stroke panel, enable this option, which is the scale of the object, and then you can resize. But in case that this doesn't work, you can go with an additional option, which is the option that's called scale override. This one you can find on the transform panel. If you click here to enable, this will be enabled and you have some options if you click in this arrow. Now, if I resize this without the scale view object turned on on the stroke panel, it's going to follow the size. Now I will enable here a little effect, the outline, okay? If I resize this without this layer effects turned on, this is what's gonna happen. The project will not follow the stroke properly. This is not what I want. So if you work and resize in that way, it's gonna have this result. Instead, I will keep this now, turn it on, okay, layer effects, and then I can resize. And then it's gonna keep the outline following the same uh, size from the layer effects, okay? Now, let's talk about the roster persona. What we got here new? Well, we don't have a lot of many new stuffs here for the roster persona in Affinity Designer, but there are some improvements. The first one that I see from the pixel persona is that you can have brushes display view in thumbnail. Basically, we got before just in list. Now we have this in in thumbnail, which is something similar to Photoshop. And other thing that I want to bring as well about the improvements that I noticed is that the performance of the paintings, all right, the, the raster and drawing here experience. So the performance here got very fast. I will be honest with you, you know, uh, before it was not perfect, but now you can work with huge uh, brush strokes and now it's working pretty decent, pretty nice. Also, I noticed that they got the anti-alize option, right? Before in the version earlier, you don't have this option. Now you have the anti-alize. This anti-alize, I'll create a new layer. Uh, I'll grab here the fluid fill tool. This one is enabled. And then I'll make this source layers, uh, layers beneath this one. Now I'll make this in yellow and then I'll click here in the areas. In this pixel layer is working better because let's say that you don't have this option turned on. Then you try to paint these areas in black. So this is what the result before. Now you have anti-alize turned on and then you can change and make it this much better and soft. And now let's bring here the final considerations that I want to tell you what I think, uh, if this is worth it to upgrade. Well, as you can see, Affinity has been working very hard, I'd say in the background about this new version. As you can see, we got the most important features, which is the mesh tool, the shape builder, and it, it seems that they are really, uh, really caring about the users. They are really uh, reading, you know, the forum because many people has been, oh my gosh, I want to have this tool. I want to have that feature. I want to have everything from Adobe Illustrator, but I don't want to pay a subscription because this is what Affinity uh, delivers. No, no subscription. A uh, really good performance, all right? Affinity has grown much, much more over the performance here. As I can see, I tested a lot. I've, I've been working with them to test their software. Right now, Affinity has become a very good competitive against Adobe, you know, giants. And in this video, I made a quick overview over these features. And in the upcoming tutorials, upcoming videos, I want to explain, explore even more each of this functionality. I'd like to invite you to join to my new Affinity Design 2.0 Ultimate Curse. In this course, you're gonna learn everything that you need to know about this new version and how you can use Vector from scratch. And look, you don't need to pay subscription to get this course. You're gonna get just one time and this will be all yours. To get this, the link will be available on the description below.